Fisting from uh, the wealth of knowledge of Owen Bayer, who is the deputy majority leader in the National Assembly, Senator for Makweni Dan Manzo. Also, we have Farah Malim, who is a member of parliament in the DAB. Also, we do have with us Eden Kenan, member of parliament, El Das. Topic at hand is also the issue of dialogue, the question of parliament, and the robustness of the debates in the parliament. Has it really been going down the tubes over the years? And the question is, what is the caliber of leaders that we do have in Parliament who are legislating? And this is the article that I said that I will pick it up on the other side of a break before we just took a, a short break, if we have it in full. And just, I won't read, I'll spare you the details. It says, Kenya needs leaders, not followers, in Parliament and county assemblies. If we may just zoom in it, I'll read what it says here. Those who support the government argue that there was no brutality by the police and that what was witnessed was a high sense of responsibility by the law enforcement officers under very difficult circumstances. The opposition and its supporters argue that the reverse is true. Many other Kenyans have different views on the issues on the issue unencumbered by these binary lenses. The debate in the House was therefore bound to bring to the fore the political divisions in the country. What was shocking though was the lack of awareness of the high calling and status that legislators have in the country. The toxic nature of the debate betrayed a lack of appreciation of what leadership calls for and the circumstances and background against which the debate was being conducted. On the day the debate was taking place, I had attended a session, he says, where presentations were made on the place of leadership in societies and institutions. Books on leadership underscored the fact that leadership is about influence and transformation. Applying this to the discussion by the legislators, what the country was and is looking for are leaders and not followers. It's about sticking one's neck out to help influence the trajectory of the country positively. I had expected the legislators to recognize that there is no benefit in speaking to the gallery. What I looked forward to was clear articulation of the differences of opinion. However, whenever we expect leaders from parliament, invariably, they disappoint in their callousness and lack of appreciation of, the concept of their constitutional status. Dan Mazo. Yes. You own it. Now, uh, first of all, uh, let me say that uh, ask him how much Dr. Collins... I asked him how much? How, how much he's playing to the gallery or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me say, how much are you playing to the gallery yourself? Yes, yes, let me say is that Dr. Dr. Collins, or, or Dr. is somebody I know for many years since childhood. Went to high school with him and went to university with him and he's a very balanced uh, individual. You're with him in Sare. Yes, <laughs> uh, we're with him in Sare Boys Center. In fact, because I am Daniel, uh, Daniel and his Collins, who are desk mates. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he has done very well in, uh, in, uh, you know, in the professional field and uh, he's, he's doing very well at the University of Nairobi, uh, Faculty of Law. Uh, I want to say there is a, a big problem with the way we are doing our politics. You see, uh, the Constitution requires the whole house to oversee the government. Majority and minority. That's why we have majority and mi the system we have is that the whole house should oversee the government. But unfortunately, there are a lot of members of parliament who hold themselves as part of the executive. And unfortunately, uh, people are either persuaded or coerced, you know, politically to vote in a certain way. And that is what has brought in the finance bill. And, and, and despite, you know, public participation, not even one percent of what was in public participation went into the bill and this is what has precipitated the situation we have seen uh, in the country in fact it is not just mere piketty or demonstration uh the country has been so much frustrated uh when 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 parliament is in bed with the executive and uh i will say that i will describe the courts you know, anybody dealing with the fair administration of justice, uh, that division of, uh, of, 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 of interpreting the Constitution, they don't stay there long and they get very frustrated and their personal security is also threatened. So that in Kenya now we have a ruler, but not a leader. Uh, we have a, we are, you know, we should, be we should be servants of the people. The president should be the a servant of the people. Uh, and and um, when, when, when there is an issue like a high cost of living, I believe something should be done not to defeat the ends of justice, 
but for the benefit of Kenyans. You saw the case of the cars. The cars were sworn in quickly before people go to court because the executive believed something was not very right. And that's why you found one judge saying the first 22 is okay, 23, but the rest is a problem. And I think that should have been a debate so that Kenyans understand what's the role of these people. In our constitution, we deliberately avoided assistant minister to lower the cost of government. So then it is coming back politically. All these people were to do a political reel. And there are many things which have gone wrong, which I think should be corrected. And the politics are more than any other thing in the House uh, and the running of the government. And that's why the people are not to the government. You see, a, a popularly elected government will execute on behalf of people without fear and without feeling threatened by the opposition. The role of the opposition to check the government. Really, we don't have opposition currently as structured. We have majority and minority. Both majority and minority should check the government of the day to make sure things are correct. All right. But is the efficacy of parliament there anymore? Are we, sorry, are we feeling the efficacy or, or the effectiveness of parliament, a robust place of legislation where we have delegated that particular power to our you know, new legislators to represent us, but the quality of debate has been going down the tubes and this is where we don't even trust the legislators. Maybe people now will say we want to take things on our own and go to the streets because you're not speaking on behalf of Kenyans when you're elected there. So you said you've been in the entire... Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I think there are two so things that we need to separate. <coughs> the numbers have changed. We used to have 222, including the 12 nominated, and now, right now we have uh, 416, I think 416, 417. Almost twice the number that we used to have from the advent of, uh, from the promulgation actually of the current constitution. That has effect. Even the speaker may not know everybody because of the numbers. Even <laughs> I'm sure my friend here is a deputy yes. leader, a deputy yes. majority leader. It's yes. difficult because of the numbers. If the speaker is asking actually the more allocation of time, that's you don't have enough time because, to actually... Because of the numbers, that's a reality. Whose mistake? The framers of the current constitution and also the public, because they wanted that. And two, the leadership, the parliamentarian, they see, you know, just elect themselves. It's a reflection of the society. The society, I'm sure even where you voted, you must have voted. I don't know for the body. <laughs> But I think if you ask your kinsmen, they must have voted for somebody from their community. Until we reach a stage where we'll be voting people on an ideological uh, you know, basis, this issue of lack of capacity, this is new government. This, this is new always been there because we fought tribally, uh, we think tribally, we think regionally. That has an effect on the overall performance. I will say that I think general parliamentarians have also been very good. One thing that we need to initiate which I think we have, we, has been a challenge, is how to give a bit of both quantification and qualification on uh, the caliber. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so some, but that has been very difficult. We tried it in the uh, ninth parliament, we were defeated, we tried it in the 10th parliament. There, there's been an attempt, just because right now, anybody can be a member of parliament. Anybody can be a member of the county assembly because there's no qualification. The only qualification is you must be a voter. That needs to be domesticated. That, that, I see that as a challenge, especially in this era of serious public accountability. Because you may have an MCA who can read and write. And then they're expected to oversight governors with billions of, 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 uh, of shillings as annual allocation. That being the case, I think let's come back to, there's something my brother here, Farah, has said. What are we negotiating about? What is the debate? I was just trying to look at it. Dialogue. What is the dialogue about? You see, in our country, there are two things. We have political preneurs. Just like we have had tender preneurs. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have had serious uh, 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 tender preneurs, and then that has given rise to now political preneurs. These political preneurs go to a general election not to win, mm. to make money. but to make a maximum gain out of that. And they dupe everybody. When you go to politics and you compete, you struggle to get power. But when you join, the competitive politics just to get a personal gain and you want everybody else to that is the biggest problem actually facing in this country and that's why the issue of dialogue is subjective okay. we have a government look at the definition of an opposition party an opposition party is a dissonant is a dissonant 
party or no parties that is ideologically opposed to the government, government in place. Ideologically. The catch word is ideologically. ideologically. What we have here is, on the face of it, we subscribe to our democracy, our sovereignty. And remember, Nepal, the making of the sovereign state of Kenya first has been tribal, because that has brought together many nation states. We have had the Somali nation, the Kamba nation, the Mijikenda nation. They came together to form the sovereign republic of Kenya as one country. That was expected to be ideological oriented. And that's why we have a written constitution. That is what the, our forefathers had in mind. That is why we have subscribed to elections after every five, five years, years, so that we compete ideologically. But equally, we also entrained our tribes and regions <coughs> for our own personal aggrandizement. That has taken now a big role on our governance platform. And this is one thing that is eating us. What we need to do at this stage, and I think uh, Honorable Farah has, has, has ably talked about this. A government has been elected. You have subjected, I was supporting Azimio. Honorable Farah was supporting Azimio. Mwanza was supporting Azimio. We wanted to capture power peacefully, democratically. Mm -hmm. But our own people, the voters in their wisdom say, no, you're not at right. Wait, this is the time for KK and William Ruto. We disagreed, we went to the Supreme Court. We lost. We lost. What other options? The only other option left is to persuade the Kenyans. We accepted the court. We accepted the decision of the Supreme Court because this is a, this is not a banana republic. This is a democratic republic governed with different arms of government. Though well, right now, these days, traditionally we have had the legislature, the executive, and, um, and uh, the judiciary. Now we have other imagined, serious imagined, like uh, the no, members of the fourth estate. No, uh, no, no, corruption. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to allude is this. From 1991 to date, every time, first of all, we fought very hard to repeal Section 2A, to have Kenya as a fully functional multi party state in 1991, 1992. After that, we have had elections, serious elections supervised by an independent electoral commission. But at the end of the elections, there are issues. What are these issues? Oh, the elections were not won fairly. Oh, my community is excluded. Even Trump, even, even in America, there are issues with elections. There is no way where democracy is 100%. But you accept, you accept the right. rule, the will of the people. But in Kenya case, Thank you. let me conclude this by saying, you come and say, oh, I want to be part of the government. Oh, I, I, uh, my community is excluded. Inclusivity. Oh, I want inclusivity. Oh, my role must be defined in the constitution. You lost. That is why me, if I was, in the, if I, truly, if I was to advise my friends, you know, Jubilee has given notice to exit uh, the As new coalition yes. because of this apparent abuse of our constitution. And we said we can never be party to a violent Mandamanos, that is completely meant actually to destroy the social, economic, and political right. problem. We'll, we'll, we'll take, 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 I'm, I'm just saying, what our friends will have done, and I challenge them, let them enact the law on embedding the office of the official opposition, let them form their shadow cabinet, let them anoint whoever is going to succeed uh, Baba as the, the next leader of the official opposition, and come up with ideological platform to checkmate what the current government actually is doing in the, uh, in the economy on education thank you, thank you. And, and give that framework so that Kenyans can respect that we have two alternatives. We have the government mm -hmm. and the opposition. That is what we expect. Thank you. I wanted just to come to you, Owen Bayan. Yes, yes. You, it's good that you're raising some of these issues that I think Kenya Kwanzaa has uh, affronted, uh, embedding the official opposition office. Yes. Uh, there's the issue of the CDF. Yes. There's and, the issue uh, of the two-third gender rule. Yes. And uh, I, I, I was wondering, and I've been asking these questions, because it seems also this particular uh, dialogue, you have cluttered a, a lot of issues around it. For me, I think, well, first of all, the issue of two-third gender rule should not be part of a, of a dialogue. Mm -hmm. That is the remit of government to make sure that it, it installs two-third gender rule. Why would you bring two-third gender rule for, di for a dialogue uh, in I'll, the first place? I'll, 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 Why I'll, can't just President uh, William Ruto himself, yes. he launched also the Women's Charter, yes. right? Yes. That was a good gesture that now, you know, this is a, the government that we want to embrace women uh, in all facets of its governorship. I want Why to would you here. bring two-thirds gender rule here? You see, the two-thirds gender rule, why we need to have a bipartisan approach to the two-thirds gender rule is because it is a constitutional issue. 
that two-thirds gender mm -hmm. rule. Yeah. How do we implement two-thirds gender rule in this country? Uh, Adam Duale brought a bill. Several other people brought a bill to change the constitution so that we are able to achieve the two-thirds gender rule. Otherwise, you see, even BBI... Progressively. Yes. BBI brought in the issue of uh, gender rule. The courts have ruled on uh, the gender, the two-thirds gender. This is a question that uh, might take us another 10 years if we do not get into the table to discuss and agree and say we need to change the constitution. What do we need? We need two-thirds. How do we uh, get the two-thirds from parliament? As Mio and Kenya Kwanza need to agree. But, so that this is a but constitution. I, I thought this, is, this is very express, can I, expressly given from a constitution. Yes. Why, why do we need to change the constitution? Implementation, and, uh, implementation of that two-thirds gender rule is hazy and cannot be achieved. I attended the conference on, by the way, uh, uh, the Minister for Gender called a conference on uh, uh, players at uh, Kempinski on the two-thirds gender rule so that she can pick it up from where Mwishimiwa Duale left so that now it is government driven. And she brought in all the uh, players from all the sectors to come and have a discussion on that. And I, I think a bill is uh, in the offing coming to Parliament on the same. And this is something that we need consensus on. We need consensus on the idea of CDF entrenching on it in uh, the Constitution. It's a constitutional issue. We need two-thirds to do that. The other item is on the leader of opposition. It is something that all of us in this country need consensus on. And that's why these are important issues that we need to bring to the table to ensure we clear those four items from the, t from the tray. But again, uh, uh, Debala, I would like to say this. The issue that Azimio are bringing, the issue of cost of living, is a manifesto issue of the ruling coalition. Mm -hmm. We have a proposal on how to bring the cost of living down. Azimio has their own proposal on how to bring the cost of uh, living down. We think, we believe, the president believes, and I believe, and we believe that our, our um, route to bring the cost of living is okay. Today, the prices of wound have started coming down, and this is a fact. We are sure that in our quest to bring down the cost of fuel, although we have taken it to 8% overall, 16 uh, percent but we believe that with the new government initiatives we will bring that down we do not need to sit with Azimio to tell us how to implement our manifesto who does that we had a manifesto that Kenyans voted and said yes as uh, Kenya Kwanza has the solution to the country and they voted us in and they voted the president in the president did not go there with nothing he went there manifesto and said this is about to bring the cost of living down by ensuring that we spare <coughs> production by, doing, by making sure that we have agriculture, by making sure that we have dams that, by looking at productivity, that is what the president said. And he be, we believe that given time, the president will actually achieve what he said in the manifesto. What do these Azimio people have to tell us about bringing the cost of, uh, they were in government, they were with the Uru. Things skyrocketed, you know. Today, Raila Odinga wants to teach William Root on how to bring the cost of living down when he could not advise uh, Uru Kenyatta on how to do it. That is something we don't want to entertain. And I also want to tell uh, Dad Mazo, you know, you have five idle people, people who have nothing else to do. They wake up in the morning, they think about, I think we need to do this. William Ruto is busy trying to fix issues in this country. We were at the port uh, uh, three days ago with the president. Lam. Yes, no, no, the Mombasa port. Mombasa port. Yes, we were there. And we met the stakeholders and users of the port. And everybody was saying, you see, the issues that were there in terms of the policies that were put in the previous regime stifled the growth of the port and we are losing billions and billions of shillings because of the policies that are there. Thank People you. didn't even know that Kenya Maritime Authority, a small body, had been given so much power such that for you to be able to import or to export you have to pass Kenya through uh, uh, Kenya, Kenya Maritime Authority and it makes the whole import and export business very difficult. There are like 20 players, and the president flagged out 21 issues that need to be uh, uh, taken care of for the port to work effectively. <coughs> Meaning, <coughs> millions of money are locked out of this country because of the, of the bureaucracies and some funny policies and rules and, you know, some laws Thank that you. have made it very in a, uh, uh, the port very ineffective. Well, the president is dealing with that, and he took a whole day. Thank you.
We will come to the port issues. Thank you, Steve. But what does Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musioka, Eugene Wamala, Jeremiah Kioni do? They only think about Sufurias and putting Sufurias on their head for a whole week, for a whole month. That's the only thing they're thinking about. The president <coughs> is looking at how do we make the economy work. He's been at the cost looking at how do we ensure the blue economy Thank you. brings resources into this country and lowers the cost of living. All right. The president is busy. Right. Stop but dragging but him into dialogues <laughs> that will not take this country anywhere. Right. But you should not underestimate the power of Sufria. <laughs> because I think also the Roman Empire. <laughs> you remember the power of Sufria, what it did also to the Roman Empire. When you're holding food yes. and, and the populace are in hunger. Right. But issue of gender, because you wanted to latch on that as well. Yes, yes. It should not be part of this conversation. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, isn't Absolutely. it? You agree. It's, it's, what it's, are your reasons? It's a constitutional matter. It's a constitutional matter. That affects us all. And we don't need any, legis any, any legislation yes, around it. And, and, and no country, by the way, no country in the world that I know of has got a gender provision of a gender equity in, in, in constitution. You create an affirmative action. I can't come one day here. You see, right now you have said gender. I'll go there and say, look, my, 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 the percentage of my, my, my community in the in the in, in, in what do you call it, in the country is ten percent, for example. And for, for argument's sake, I say eight percent. I need eight percent of every good job. I need eight percent of these things. I mean, no country does that. So what we need to do is that we create an affirmative action. Rwanda has got more women in their parliament than men. Do they have an affirmative? Do they have what do you call a gender rule? No, they don't. They, you empower. You empower the people in a democracy. You don't set aside seats. This thing smacks of socialism and communism of the olden days. So this has got to be repealed and replaced. Yes, yes and that's why it has to come to, to repeal. discussion. Yes. We went ahead and we said we need 47 women reps there. You know what I mean? And, 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 and we already have that, which, which, I, which I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, okay. Be that is at me. Like, we have to repeal this one because it's not achievable. And it defeats the very purpose of democracy. And you don't have that anywhere else in the world. We don't have to invent the will. Secondly, in 2008, when we were fighting for electoral justice, I was one person who suggested that let's have a caretaker government, <laughs> which is a coalition government, and prepare this country for elections in one year's time. Let the winner be declared who's the winner. We were fighting for electoral justice. We we're not fighting to go there into the banquet, what do you call a, 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 a table. No, 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 no. We want power sharing. We want power sharing. And that's how exactly it happened. We ended up with the Prime Minister and everything else. 1998, a lot of issues out there. Maja. Coalition. First of all, cooperation. You get my point? And then later on, Maja. Now again, it's the same thing. Every five years, we're going back through the same thing. So it defeats the very philosophy of a democracy. Of a democracy. Now, it's cultism. All those guys, I sit on the chair there, and all I see is that people playing, you know, play, playing out to an, a gallery outside. In chamber, in the chambers. In the chambers. A friend of mine told me, my friend towards the elections, you do me a favor if you throw me out of the house. <laughs> I know so, that, so, they, I know so they got the popularity. No, no, no. I, 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 for, I, for the not, optics. I will not campaign back home. <laughs> That's a good I'm campaign. A, I'm only going to talk about the, the goodness of my party leader, and I'll fight you on the there, and I will fight everybody. Throw me out and send me out for two weeks. You win the election. <laughs> you win the party the, ticket. He made, he made it back. So there is no democracy. It's cultism. It's warlords. A modern form of a warlords. And then, why do you have a problem with warlords? Because these warlords went into monopolies. This country's economy went to hell because there were monopolies in the port. Bats were set aside for big wigs. Business for certain countries in the neighborhood was set aside for big wigs. Competitive, what do you call, uh, 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 the, the business itself was eliminated because 4,000 containers that came with edible oil was all closed because some big guy up there has an interest in edible oil, so you have to destroy these ones. And what did they do? Most of them came from my own community. They only reshipped them to Tanzania and set up shop in Tanzania. Others set up shop in, uh, in, in Uganda. Now, 
those two countries have picked up better than us. We go and buy from them instead of them coming to buy from us. Why do you think Uganda is a very progressive country when they've had somebody who is called a dictator for the last 40 years plus? How many years has uh, Severi been there? From 1986. It's 37 years. But Ugandans love him. You know why? He has no interest in business. He has absolutely no interest in business. But here we have a political class which is also looking for money. All the time. All the time. All the time. Even when we lose elections, money has got to come into focus and say, no, no, where's the Kulapekeako? Because the ones who come in, I mean, at least. And now, Kenya Maritime Authority. Authority. Okay, You're telling me about that. The whole thing became like a mafia thing in the country itself. Deep state. Yeah, the, the, the president has got a relative somewhere there or a friend somewhere there and then he puts all the authority and powers in that, concentrates it there. I was seeing something like monopolies being gotten rid of in a place. How do you have a monopoly in a market economy? How do you tell a country that you cannot take your goods or your containers to any other CFS <coughs> except the CFS or so and so? So basically what I'm trying to say is that this country, we, 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 went, we, we, we messed everything. Why? Because the political class at the highest level wants all the money and all the power. That has to change. That Thank accountability you. has got to come out. Now those same political power, opposition or government, are the ones who are controlling parliament. Parliament, you know, we are, it's more or less like a, some people are playing to the gallery of Kenya Kwanza. It's a hostile takeover, so to speak. Uh, some people are playing to the camera. I, really call, I even call them cultism, you know, because they have to see a router watching them out there to see somebody's doing a good job. But, but Kenya Kwanza, if I might uh, All right. Kenya, let, 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 let me just finish. Let me just finish. Kenya Kwanza legislators are very independent. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. I'm the only independent member of parliament. Let me finish. Let me tell you. My friends from, from Waipa, they have to play to Kalonzo Musioka. No, I can defend my good, Just a moment. They, they are my, not. My good old friend, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. Including you. No, no, no don't. But, but, can I just finish? But, but, I don't. I don't. Okay. I've always been dependent. Uh, uh, are you speaking the, as a deputy the, the speaker? Best, uh, the no, no, no. I'm talking about the well. culture of politics in the country, the way it's been transacted. Some of those immediate what you call advisors who go out there, they keep on giving good names, heap a lot of things, send somebody to hold out, and at the end of the day, because they've been sitting around all the time, they want to come back and they come back to parliament. And the best politician, we, one of the best politicians that will ever come to this country is Kalonzo Musioka. I agree with you on that. Very he's all right. the most sober guy out there. And he's in the wrong place. Hang on a minute. He's he's <laughs> no, he shouldn't be I holding well, brief. I, 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 Dan Mazo is here, the deputy is, uh, just, can I finish? is here. Can yes. I finish? Okay, finish. <laughs> for Azimio, particularly from Lua Nyanza, everybody has to play to Raila Odinga. <laughs> Your people are probably one of the people who are so independent lawyers. They have to play to multiple, what do you call things? For them, ni... Ni kila mtu wako na hiyo, mirije yake hapo ndani. Can I give you a small story? So, so, can we get... It's a busa pot. Yeah, eh. Get out of the busa pot, yeah. So, can we... Let me give you a small story. You know, you're a very brilliant lawyer. A very brilliant lawyer in parliament. Very brilliant. Can I finish? Let me can I finish? Just hold your point to say this. So, during the BBI debate, he came out very strongly. Very strongly and said, you see, this BBI will not not hold water and uh, as a lawyer and uh, experienced person he said very unpalatable things about baby that's what his perspective both his perspective and the perspective of the law and he trashed it the next time he was thrown out as vice chair of uh, <laughs> jaylak of jaylak uh -huh. and i asked him what happened he said now you think i'm becoming a dadahead these days i asked him why because i have to speak even when i know they see no reason i have to find reason yeah. To support a position which I do not agree with, because I have to survive politically. Yes. <laughs> but, but, but isn't that the political reality so, so, that we're so, living in? Yes. Uh, um, you know, but, but Dan Manzo can survive. We, 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 yeah. we want to. You know, no, 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 no. You hang on. You hang on. You hang on. You hang on. Because you know, even Dan Manzo cannot speak because you're the deputy leader. And you know, in terms of protocol, even within. Yeah. 
Kati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty that he has is just you, you, you something of, of, of oh, how. Yeah, he, you, yeah, yes. Yeah. Less you'll be whipped. But I want to hear from Dan Mazo a bit, just a reflection of what Farah is saying, first of all. Well, well you, you know, unfortunately... Um, in the Senate, the, it's not the same. The, yeah, the Senate is a little bit different, but uh, almost the same. The, the, the only one who has lost completely power right now and had a lot of powers only a year ago is Uhuru. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's following Uhuru now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, even in the Senate, like when we were making amendments on the IBC Act, yes. the leader of majority had allowed the Committee on JLAC to deal conclusively. And amendments had already been uh, prepared. But at the last minute, uh, leader of majority announced, sorry, there is a political party position. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and therefore, all amendments have to be dropped, and this law has to be passed as it is, unchangedly. Yeah. You know, uh, within an hour, we should, uh, you know, be through. And there are these professional people who call under, you know, the standing orders uh, that uh, members are repeating themselves. Yeah. There's no need for debate. Ca can it be called to vote? Standing order 95. Uh, st yeah, well, in the, in the National Assembly, standing order 95, 95. Is, uh, and it's replicated in the Senate. And uh, quickly, you know, people wanted to make an input or even debate and change minds of others. Uh, that has been hijacked, and voting has to happen per, you know, political party position. That's for, for, for that's Kenya Kwanza. And uh, quickly, the, the act is passed without real debate. Uh, and within one hour, uh, it's signed into law. Honestly, there is within a problem. Mm -hmm. There is a problem. We, we need to have put an question. Put, put, the the question. put the yeah, question. Put the question. And the put speaker the is forced to put the question by members. Put the question. You know, members are lying for a certain political party. Yeah. And unfortunately, up to now, you know, if you look at NARC in 2002, uh, it was a very big party. But in 2008, we had PNU, which was a very big party. It also died. And in, uh, in 2013, we had uh, Jubilee, and now Jubilee is, is, is a really small time. Uh, it's died. It's also struggling well, to survive. Yeah, yeah we, we'll come to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, come. well, I'm saying... Jubilee is dead, that Jubilee is dead. <laughs> so, so, you know what I'm trying to say? Even now, we have uh, Kenya Kwanza. And I can assure you, within a uh, few years... Uh, Kenya Kwanza will be no more because that has been the trend. Because politics <laughs> are not based. Robust party. Yes, they always said so about NARC, PNU, Jubilee. So, so we are not yet there as, as, as a democracy in the country. We need political parties which survive by ideology. We need political parties which are big time and whereby, you know, you know, you know, you know they, they, there is an ideology. And even the opposition parties should have an ideology which is the best interest of the country. I, 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 you see, if you look at the manifestos of all political parties, they're almost the same. Uh, they, they, they run almost the same principles. But when it comes to voting in the House, there is either coercion, there is manipulation, there is um, uh, negotiations, and there's also a bribe. And in fact, most of the laws have resulted out of a bribe or fraud. And you know, that's why Kenyans are protesting. That's why Kenyans are feeling something is not right in the country. We elected leaders Thank you. to be independent. I, I was, but on the floor of the house, hey, no, they have been bought. Uh, it is corruption. You hang on to your point. We'll circle corruption back to all you. the way. Yes. Let me come to, to, to the issue of... Uh, Honorable Kenan, you raised the issue of uh, you serving a notice to Azimio. Yeah. Serving a notice to Azimio, the exit of yeah. uh, Jubilee from Azimio. Yes. Why didn't you do this? The moment... The presidential, of course, uh, announcement or determination for the Supreme Court was done so that you move to Kenya Kwanzaa. Uh, you're doing it right now. And as it stands, when we look at the articles from the political parties uh, act and also what the constitution says, where you stand, you've been dimming. You've been vacillating as a party between Kenya Kwanzaa and uh, Azimio. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a question of deeming and the freedom of association. And this is where there is this ambiguity that we need to clear. As it stands right now, effectively, if the political parties act what well, to be implemented, will you still be holding your position? That's a good question. 
very good question. I'm delighted that it has come from you. Let, let me explain this. Yes. <coughs> Uh, power is transient first. Power is impermanent. We went into a coalition with the hope of taking power. Taking power. But in between, we had political preneurs. Political preneurs who are just out to achieve what the Honorable Power has just said. Their intention was not to capture power. Their intention was to make business to trade and to win Kenyans. Kenyans and their supporters in particular to that permanent cycle of expectation, false expectation. We went into a coalition, and indeed I was the coalition secretary for Jubilee and other groups. We lost the election because we didn't work hard. What happened after the election? Jubilee was gone. I will say this in the broad day, like Jubilee was gone. Jubilee is the second largest, actually the third largest party in, in parliament, parliament and the second largest party in the opposition who are called. All our positions were sold. We do not know Jubilee doesn't have any substantive position in the opposition. So we ask ourselves, and in fact, I'll tell you this, and in fact, I want to appreciate one very clever, genuine leader called uh, Captain Ali Roba, former governor. He saw his numbers were blocked actually from uh, the telephone of the person he was supporting. Who did it? That person will have been in charge of the diary of Raila if he won, God forbid. My numbers were blocked, and I'm sure Farah's numbers were also blocked. We didn't have access to the person we were supporting. That's why uh, uh, Honorable uh, Roba, first time for us, because he was in charge of his own party, for us, Jubilee was under different regime, <laughs> regime and, and leadership. So when we realized our positions were either sold, or trading for something else, we ask ourselves, we are the second largest party in the opposition, we are the third largest party in parliament, all our positions have been traded in, what do we do? We say, no, this can be, uh, can be our home. And remember, Yuda and Jubilee were originally one party, founded ideologically by President William Ruto and His Excellency Uru Kenyatta. And the Jubilee Alliance. And the, the Jubilee Alliance and the TNA and the... And, 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 URP. Uh, URP. Yes. So this, there was that temporary disagreement. So when we realized we realized we were floating, our positions were all sold. Parliamentary Service Commission, the WTV, uh, 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 the, the minority whip in the Senate, our position in uh, Pan-African Parliament, all committees, everything. So we said, what business? And nobody wants to take responsibility. I attempted to engage Raila. For two months, I looked for Uhuru over 82 times. Nobody wanted to address our issues. You will only see one man called Kioni, who has traded, who has commercialized everything, running around in the name of Jubilee. That is not the stature. That is not a person that I can subscribe to as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as the father of parliament. We just say, no, we must stop this. And then we had to do an evaluation. We did an evaluation and say, look, how did we end up in this group first? It was thought, even in the first place, it was wrong for us to have opposed William Ruto. Because William Ruto was a product of that Jubilee, United Jubilee family. And that's why God the Almighty, God the Almighty is fair. They did everything, and that's what Honorable Farah was saying. They used administrative framework, institutional framework, but God the Almighty, when they thought but they reached... Money, national resources. Not a, when, and I want you to listen to this. When they thought they have reached, they opened offices, fake offices, for non-existent CSs and everywhere, duping the Kenya public. God said, no, if we entrust the well-being of the sovereign republic of the people of Kenya to these crooks, Kenya will go down the drain. And God said, We already knew who's going to be Listen, listen let, let them finish. God said, The president, the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya, shall be one William Ruto against all odds. And that is what happened. So we did our best to do the Kenyan public. But what has come to, and I think there's something honorable what I said. But, but, but yeah, you know, let's just listen to this. No, no, no. Just listen to this. In 1997, we have had a merger. We, first of all, 98, yeah. 98, corporation, I was in parliament. Maja, 2002, uh, uh, Ile, uh, Kibaki Tosha. 2007, violence. 2013, uh, 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 ICC. 2017, mm -hmm. no election. 22, God the Almighty. God the Almighty. Rule and reign on this corrupt 
ill-motivated politicians who wanted to use Kenyans and Kenya for their own personal aggrandizement. And that's why me today, I am free, and I'm speaking consciously, I am right. free, and I, and, I, and I thank the Almighty God for not allowing those people to have help, All right. to have vote. Thank you, thank let you. Me, let me conclude like this. That's why we as Jubilee, when we were subjected to this, whoever was annoyed with Uhuru, I wasn't party to, 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 to uh, the handshake. This was something that was manifested between Uhuru and Raila Odinga. But I became a victim. I lost my positions. The entire Jubilee members lost their positions. Fatuma Dula today, one of the most resilient ladies who has been elected, directly elected as a senator for Cielo, has been demeaned, has been abused. But she lost her position. She appointed herself. No. We, we even no, no, no. She, not, she lost both her position as the minority whip in the Senate and also her position. Okay. Look at, my, my, my question because of time. Because of time. Because of, of time. No, yeah, yeah. Look at what they did to the Honorable Oluke. When they realized they were not comfortable with, uh, with Kainan, they went to prison, took benefits, got benefits from the Honorable Oluke, gave him a fake letter in trying to say, no, we are not comfortable with Kainan, we are not comfortable with Fatuma Dulu. All right. We'll give you. And you know what happened? The next day they went around. That is the slot right now being occupied by. Okay. No, oh, uh, given all that drama. No, no, given Macau, all that drama. Uh, uh, I am honorable Macau. So even Waiba should have stood at that particular and said, this slot is not theirs. This slot is for Jubilee. It should have declined. Thank you. So thank that you. is why we as Jubilee. I'm coming to your. Uh, the, yes, your book yes, question. please. We as Jubilee, we have given notice, pass one, to the provisions of the law. We can't be party to a scheme that is meant to dupe the Kenya. And that's why the issue of dialogue, what Honorable Farah had said is, what are we dialoguing about? Allow the president and his government to ideologically pursue Thank you. what they have presented to the people of Kenya. All right. And that is what we use to, pay, to say, to do an evaluation and say they have performed on this, they do not perform thank you, on thank this. You. Uh, let, let me butt in. <coughs> let me butt in. And, 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 and about this, right now there is this dialogue which is going on. We have been told to audit this. You are revising the formation of IEPC, which is legally, constitutionally mandated to do with issues of election. Equally, you are asking for an audit of the election. Look All at right. the paradox. Thank you. Thank Look you. At the I'll, I'll, I'll allow me to. Allow me to no, 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 no. Allow me. Allow me to butt in now okay. because yes. uh, Dan Mazo, you need to respond to this as well. Yes, yes. When it comes to issue that has been raised here, I think you you have a say uh, just to give you that particular platform because I think also the. Mm. All, 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 all the legislators here, they're speaking from one voice. When it comes to Aidan, when it comes to Sabina Shege, when it comes to Kanini Kega, from the Constitution, the, 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 the position of freedom of choice and deeming, where are we at? And what is the effective place of the law? Yes, sir. You know, <clears throat> when you support activities of another coalition or political party other than the one you elected, the law says that you are deemed to have left uh, your political party, which sponsored you to parliament. I think the best thing that uh, they can do in the circumstances, although that law has not been implemented properly, is to resign and seek fresh election. Fresh if they resigned and sought fresh mandate in a different political party or in a different coalition, uh, then that will suffice. And, and I think that would be very good of them to do so. That's the, the, the ordinary practice. That's <laughs> the ideal position. But uh, unfortunately... Yeah, well, but yeah. unfortunately... No, no, yes. <laughs> Well, Raila Odinga did it in, in 1997. 1997. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He resigned from his party and, and he sought re-election. NDP, and 95. And 95. And 95 and yes. He resigned so, from the, the party of his father <laughs> yeah. and formed his own party. Yeah, well, <laughs> one can say so. But, but that's the ideal situation. Okay. Unfortunately, in Kenya, it doesn't work like that. Um, I can assure you, if uh, Raila Odinga won the election, Honorable Kainan <laughs> would not have left Jubilee. He would be firmly in Jubilee and would firmly support the government. Uh, but now that, uh, we, uh, for some reason, uh, it is believed that we lost the election, he has now to shift. That is not the practice mm. all over the world. That is not true. That's not the practice we're, all we're over dipped. the world. We're dipped. In that America, in, 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 in America, you, you, you see right now, the president has the minority. And that's why they have lost the speakership. Uh, and, and, and you see, we have not seen, we have not seen uh, President Joe Biden looking for... I'd, I'd address what Wife <coughs> did between 2017 and 2022 when, when the very ODM 
Can he finish? Can he, I give Ask you him, because I want him to be factual. All right, we, we can carry on the conversation. What, yeah, 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 what, what, what your party okay. did between 2017 and 2022 when they were also shortchanged the way, can you, and also for Kenya, and ANC, the three parties that constituted Thank you. that Thank you. coalition At, then. Yeah, briefly. About, and about, and you were one, one of the We need to wind up, we need to wind up, we need to wind up. We are explaining that, so we should be, we should have political, you know, neatness, we should have... Uh, uh, you know, good you manners. Should, good manners of political <laughs> practice. That's what is lacking in the country. Good practices. Political the, hygiene. Political hygiene. Let Fantastic. Me put it that way. Right. Honorable right. Bai, let's wind up. Yes. I'm, I'm being handed out of the studio. Hmm. Let's begin with you. you know, I, want to, shorts. I want to say this that um, we cannot continue to entertain political bad manners. When a government <coughs> wins an election, it should be given time to implement its manifesto that you cannot win an election, you cannot lose an election, you lose at the Supreme Court, and then want to use a backdoor, a constitution, you want to abuse the constitution to destabilize a legally elected government. That is what Raila Odinga has been known to do from, to, to, from 2007. Try to destabilize our government so that he can get a position Thank in you. government. I want to ask my, my friend, my former friend, the Honorable Raila Odinga, your former Please. party leader. Yes, my former party leader. Give Kenya a break. We need peace. We need stability. Thank he you. He wants to go to the first world, and he's holding back this country. He needs to stop, and he needs to stop Thank you. now. All right. Farah Malim, 30 seconds. Well, I've met my, my, my point. I agree with uh, uh, what uh, everybody here has said. I do agree with him. If you want to leave your political party, you have to set a fresh mandate. But if the political party itself wants to leave a coalition, yes. they don't have to seek a fresh yes. mandate. Yeah. That's, that's the difference between the two. So the debate uh, of the coalition also uh, is coming uh, to the fore. As, 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 uh, as for, the, for, the, for the issues that this country needs to move forward, this country has been subjected to the worst, the worst administration in the history of this country by the 10 years of William, sorry, of, of, of Uhuru Kenyatta. And, and we need to move on. All right. Thank and, you. And, 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 and there has to be a separation of business and politics. Thank you. I think that's a good point we, to we end. We need to have an Thank antitrust you. law here that stops everybody, including William Ruto, from engaging in business. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You get my point? Right. Let's leave and, it at that. And everybody who is there who is a, a manager in the executive and uh, has got to stop being... Because that's why this country is lagging behind. Thank you. Thank you. And the other countries are going forward. We'll pick it up next week. Sulu is not in business. Thank you. Seven is not in we'll, business. We'll pick it up next week. All right. My take is this. My partnership is this. We are dealing with a new president. We need to understand his persona. In my opinion, I believe the route the president wants to take Kenya is the route Lee Kuan Yew took Singapore. I want to ask Raoula Odinga and cohort, allow, give the president the space, let him implement his vision. That is what we will use to judge his government. Thank you. And, and, and to President William Ruto, let you not be distracted by the noises. Go and implement the agenda that you have promised the people of Kenya. And that is what we thank will you. use to judge him. Thank you. As an individual and also the performance thank of you, his thank government. Thank you. Dan Mazo, finally. Yeah, condolences to the families who lost their dear ones. We have, unfortunately, a lot of young people have died out of uh, the Mandamano